Let's go back and look at this you know, righteousness. Again, Mark 16, Jesus said, go, right, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so we ask the question, what is the gospel? Well, you know, Jesus talked about the gospel of the kingdom. And that is good news that the kingdom, the millennial reign, the, 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 the power, the blessing, the prosperity, the health of the kingdom that's coming, that thousand-year reign where everything is almost like a utopia is available to you now. That is part of the gospel. But Paul gives it to us in Romans chapter 1, verse, 15, verse 16 and 17. He says, in the gospel is the righteousness of God. God's righteousness is revealed. In the gospel, God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith. God's righteousness. What does that mean? Because we know God's righteous. I mean, that's a, that's a given. What he's saying is the gospel reveals that God has now given us his righteousness simply by faith. Simply by faith. Praise God. That is Amazing. Praise God. So you're ready to jumpstart this. Say it out loud. I have received the righteousness of God by faith. I am righteous. Now, I want to say, uh, I want to say this because we probably, oh boy, I think I just got an assignment. Wow. Ooh, a futurist. Whoa. That was a uh, man. Did y'all feel that? Did you hear that? Okay. That was awesome. I think I just heard the Holy Spirit say inside of me, teach about the heart. Teach on the heart. Remember that one about codependency? And I said, well, Lord, I don't know a whole lot about it. I just now realizing in my mind, I don't know a whole lot about, I don't have a, a outline or a study guide or I've done some teaching on the heart. I, you know, I'm thinking of a couple of verses about it, but I think I just heard the Lord teach on the heart, teach on the heart. And your heart is not your spirit. Your spirit's perfect. When you got born again, when you accepted Jesus, your spirit was made perfect, a perfect adult. You're a, you weren't, you're not a baby spirit. You're not born again and you have a little baby infant spirit. When God recreated you, recreated you the spirit person, he recreated you as a fully mature adult in the spirit. Now, the part of us that has to grow is our understanding of who we now are. And we, we start out with a very infant Infantile, infantile grasp of what's happened to us. And so we grow in our mental, soulish understanding of who we are in the spirit. But the minute you accepted Jesus, you were born into the kingdom of God. You were recreated and you, the spirit being, the real you, the spirit being, was instantly made a fully mature spiritual adult with full rights, full privileges. Some people never grow in their understanding of that. Their mind never gets renewed to understand that. Praise God. Amen. And so, you know, and here, here's a proof like Galatians chapter 4. I don't want to get off track, but here, here's Galatians chapter 4. So, but I'm going to prove to you that you're in Galatians 4. I'm going to show you when you receive Jesus, you are instantly a spiritual adult, spiritually full-blown spiritual adult. But it's your mind, your understanding of it that has to grow in Christ. You have to, it has to grow. You have to, you got to get your mind renewed. Okay. So Galatians chapter four, I think the Lord said, teach on the heart, not today, but in the future. And uh, I've got to just trust him for utterance on that because I don't have any detailed outline of anything. What does have to trust like we did codependency? Trust it. All right. Now. Galatians 4, 4, 4, 3, even so we, talking about us before, before talking to these Galatians before they got born again, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But 
when, this is the Jews, talking about the Jews. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth uh, his son, born of a woman, born under the law. When the right time came, God sent Jesus, all right, to redeem those who were under the law, the Jews, that we might receive the ad- adoption as sons. Okay? And because you're sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you indeed, but then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those uh, which by nature are not gods. Then he starts talking to the Gentiles. Now, this so this applies both to uh, before you were saved. He's talking about both Gentiles and Jews before they accepted Jesus. And then what happened when they accepted him? He said, therefore, verse 7, you are no longer a slave but a son. And if a son, daughters or sons too, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, the word son here, huios. H U I O S, huios. That Greek word means mature son. It's you, you are instantly made a mature son, a mature person in your spirit the minute you got saved. Right? And here's the proof then you are an heir of God through Christ. You could not become the heir, manifested heir in that Jewish culture. Roman culture, Jewish culture, until you were 13 and had a bar mitzvah or bar mitzvah when you were an adult at 13, then you became the heir. So the fact that he says you're an heir, you are instantly an heir of God, a mature adult son, heir of God. You are fully mature in your spirit the minute you got born again, but it's your mind that has such an infantile understanding of it, and we're growing in our maturity of thinking, in the maturity of our comprehension of who we are. Praise God. So how does transformation come? Romans 12, 2 says, be transformed. God wants you transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right, and that tells us what has to happen there. But how do you renew your mind? You ever think about that? Somebody says, well, read the Bible. Well, <laughs> you can read the Bible till Jesus comes or you die and still not be, <laughs> not have your mind transformed. You can quote all kinds of scriptures. You can quote the Psalms and the Proverbs. It's a good thing. You can quote the contents. You can quote the, the table of contents and the whatever in the back. <laughs> You can quote all of Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. You can even quote the epistles of the New Testament and still not know that you are a spirit that has been recreated, fully equipped, fully mature, full of God. Hallelujah. And know how to know how to walk in it. Your heart's grasp may be very immature. Your heart may not be grasping who you are. You may know a little bit of it up in your mind as a mental fact, but the grasping of the, the heart, I'm going to show you that your heart and your spirit are not the same thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad you made it. Glad you made it, uh, Jana. Praise God. All right. Now, you may have a very immature grasp of who you are. All right. But what? So what does transformation look like? 2 Corinthians 3.18, 2 Corinthians 3.18, listen to this, but we all, talking to Christians, talking to me and you, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 goes along with Romans 12.2. Romans 12.2 says, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your, your mind. That includes mind and heart go together. You, God wants transformed minds. And as your mind becomes transformed, your body will even respond with health and healing. Transformed, 
transform mind. Be re, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But now 2 Corinthians 3.18 tells you exactly how the renewing of your mind happens. He said it comes by looking into a mirror with an unveiled face. Well, what's the veil? How is our face unveiled? Remember, we talked about this a week or two ago. The veil is the old covenant. The veil is condemnation. The veil is Moses and the Ten Commandments. And he says, even in the reading of the old covenant up there um, in verse 15, but even to this day when Moses is read, when the old covenant is read, a veil lies on their heart. So you pull Moses off of your face, the Ten Commandments, all those rules and regulations and requirements that churches are telling us that we still have to follow unless if we don't follow the Ten Commandments, we're going to hell. That's not true. Now, I'm not against the Ten Commandments. They're right. But you trying to keep the Ten Commandments in your strength is no guarantee you're going to heaven. It's it's that you wouldn't need Jesus. If you could just keep the Ten Commandments, why did Jesus have to come? Why would Jesus have to come if the 10 would get you in? The 10 will not get you in. Now, once you're born again and have a new nature on the inside, you are you will do supernaturally those 10 commandments. You'll do it. You'll keep the spirit of the law instead of, instead of trying to keep the letter of the law. All right? I'm not talking about immoral living. I'm talking about supernatural living. But how does mind renewal happen? With an unveiled face, you have to look into a mirror. Well, when you look into a mirror, what are you looking for in the natural? If you go to a mirror, what are you looking to do? You're looking to see yourself in the mirror. You're looking to see yourself in a mirror. So when you pull the veil of condemnation off, you start looking into a mirror. And what do you see when you look into the mirror of who you are in Christ? He says, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. When you look into the mirror, when you see who you really are in Christ, you see the glory of the Lord. You are the glory of the Lord. That's what you should be seeing in the word. You're the righteousness of God. You are the glory, the fullness of God, the full manifestation of God. You are that. Somebody says, well, no, I'm not. I'm just little old me. Well, little old me, you're thinking in the carnal realm. You're, you're still thinking about yourself in the natural. You still have an infant, childish comprehension of who you really are. And that's where the problem is. We don't fully see in the mirror what God sees. So beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. The more clearly you see who you are in God's mirror, your outward life, your body, your outward behavior, your your living becomes transformed to align itself with who you're seeing. So we are transformed by beholding, not by behaving. We're transformed by beholding, not by behaving. Praise God. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. We need to look. What You'll become transformed when you see who you really are. You'll be, begin to act like you, the real you. Now, just think about this in the practical way. There uh, are uh, young women, especially, I'm sure some men are involved, but young ladies, young women who have eating disorders like bulimia, all right, and anorexia, where they may weigh 65 pounds and be nothing but skin hanging on bones, but when they look, and I'm talking in the natural, when they look into a mirror, they see fat. They don't see their skinny, emaciated body. They see fat. Well, so we don't, here's the point. So if that's the case, we don't see with our eyes. We see with our mind. All right. 
So when you're looking into the mirror of God's word, you're not seeing with your eyes, you're seeing with your mind. And very often there are things, the way we've grew up, things we dealt with as children and uh, the, the way that our, our, our life, you know, coming up into life has, has put filters on your mind. And those filters can block you from seeing who you really are. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your wife. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's how you grew up. Maybe it's some catastrophic event that you've defined yourself by. Maybe it's just different things in life. You see life with filters on. I've learned that as a public communicator, public speaker. I'll minister a sermon and think that I, I, I know what I said, and people will then say, well, you know, you said this and that in that message. I said, I, I did not say that. I never said that. It's, it's a good statement, but I didn't say it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you said it. No. See, what happens is when, when, uh, when we're hearing the word of God preached, when we're reading the word of God, when we're processing life, we're processing life through a set of filters. The Holy Spirit wants to put new filters in. He wants to get uh, air, clean air filters in your mind. He wants to unclog the filters. Praise God. Now, he said, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So if you're looking into the mirror and see the glory of the Lord, you're seeing yourself. You know, Ephesians chapter 1, that prayer says, I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. Well, wait a minute. If he is our Father and he's the Father of glory, then you are glory. You are his glory. You're his glorious ones. This is called the glorious gospel. Glory to praise God. Now, uh, then it says that you are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, from the old covenant fading glory to the new covenant eternal glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. It takes the spirit of, the God, of God to open your eyes to see. Let's pray this out loud. Pray this with me. You ready, Jumpstart Nation? We're going to pray the Ephesians 1 prayer. Let's pray it. We haven't done it for a while. Pray this with me. You ready? Say it out loud. Heavenly Father, I pray to you, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, please grant to each one of us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Flood the eyes of our heart with light. so that we may know the hope of your calling and what is the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints (laughs) and what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe. Amen. God just heard our prayer. Now, the Lord said to me a few minutes ago, teach on the heart. And, I, I, and my immediate response was, well, <laughs> I'm not sure I have enough information to do that, but that's what happened on codependency. So we'll trust him to give us utterance. But there's another prayer in Ephesians, in the Ephesians 3 prayer, where Paul prays for their inner man to be strengthened with his power. All right. Uh, this is Ephesians 3, 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Here's the prayer, verse 16, that he would grant you, to you Christians, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Now, the inner man here is not talking about your spirit, but about your mind and heart. Your spirit doesn't need to be strengthened. Your spirit is full of strength, all right? that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Listen, it is possible to have Christ in you, the hope of glory. To be full of Christ in your spirit. To be fully mature in your spirit but yet you don't have a grasp of that in your heart. Your heart and your spirit, 
I'm slowing down here, are not the same. You have your full wall to wall God in your spirit, your wall to wall Christ, wall to wall glory in your spirit, full of joy, full of love, full of peace, full of of uh, patience, full of faith, full of healing power in your spirit, but not necessarily in your heart. You may even know things in your brain, but it's not yet heart. When it's heart, it, it, you, you experience it. Like we have one of our jump starters yesterday shared with me, you know, a couple of years ago, we were talking about you have, I think you have joy, joy in your heart. And she said, you know, I thought, well, man, I don't know if I do. I mean, I'm sure it's true. The word says, but I haven't experienced. Well, the other day they were praying in tongues and joy bubbled up out of their spirit and got over into their heart and they began to laugh, pray in tongues and laugh. And it was awesome. This joy just bubbled up out of their spirit into their heart. Their heart finally opened and got it, man. And look, this won't work. All of this righteousness, all of this power, all of this love, this faith, this joy, this peace, this laughter in your spirit won't do you any good until you start experiencing it in your heart. Then you'll you'll feel it. You'll know it in your emotions. Your heart is more closely aligned to your mind than your spirit. So we have all this wealth, all this glory in our born again spirit but we want it working in our heart. And that's why he prayed for the strengthening of their inner man, that Christ would dwell in their heart by faith, that they being rooted and grounded in love, the love of God for them in their heart may be able to comprehend with all the saints, comprehend in their heart. What is the depth, width, length, depth, and height. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, to know the love of Christ. This is Ephesians 3, 17, 18, 19. The word know, to know the love of Christ, means to experience it so that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, you're already full of God in your spirit, but God wants you to be full of him in your emotions, in your heart. Yes, that overflow into the heart, your heart, where you feel, where you have emotion, where you think, where where you experience life. Praise God. This is so powerful. Man, this is so good. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now, now look at Proverbs 4, and then we got to quit because we're out of time. Proverbs chapter 4, I'm already getting revelation on the heart. I'm already preaching this. Man, oh, man. Father, you snuck up on me. <laughs> The Lord said, I want to make sure I heard it just right. When the word heals your heart, it will heal your heart. Wow. You know, uh, some people have a broken heart and it has affected their heart. Others their heart is is growing in revelation by leaps and bounds and it's affecting their heart their physical heart <laughs> do you know that you have um memory cells memory nerves in your heart that your heart has actually ha- it has your heart the physical organ has the ability to remember the same kind of cells that are in your brain are also in your heart. And as they've studied this, your heart will hold long-term memories. Whereas sometimes your brain is more, it does long-term, mid-term, short-term, but your heart will hold on to the deeper long-term memories. So God wants to put new memories into the uh, nervous cells of your heart. You can remember things by heart. That means that your physical heart has stored it. So sometimes we, we change all these memories and quote all these verses up here, but God wants 
some things to happen here. Man. And so a healthy heart makes a healthy heart. (laughs) That is awesome. Praise God. Man, you felt that in your heart, Nancy. You felt that. You felt it in your heart. Emotions are in the heart. The heart. Man. Oh, where are we going with this, Lord? Proverbs chapter 3, uh, 4, 20. My son, my daughter, give attention to my words. That's what, that's what we're doing. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep his words in the midst of your heart. Right? Meditation will move it by the Holy Spirit's help now. Has to take the Holy Spirit. We'll move it from head to heart by revelation. When it's revelation, that's when your heart got it. When it's revelation, when you get revelation and go, wow, like Nancy just did, I felt that was revelation. It went from head to heart. And that's healing for the heart. Now, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. When the revelation gets into the heart, it radiates out to your whole flesh. You may know a truth, a healing scripture in your brain, but you haven't really gotten the revelation in your heart. But when it hits your heart, life will be different. Heart. You can, you can have all of God in your spirit, all of faith, all healing, all power, all glory, all joy. It's in your spirit. You are an heir of God. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. You're a fully blown, God-filled, God-infused <clears throat> spirit being. And you may be able to acknowledge that with your head, but we want the spirit of wisdom and revelation dropping that into your heart. That's when you'll begin to experience who you are in the spirit. Verse 24, uh, verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart. Keep your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Not your physical heart, your heart where you process deeper memories and emotions. Guard it. Keep it. For out of it are the issues of life. What you have in your life right now issued from your heart. Your heart is the thermostat of your life. Your heart is the GPS of your life. Your financial life, your physical life, your emotional life, the quality of your life is coming from your heart. God wants your heart. He wants what who you are in your spirit to become manifested as revelation in your heart so that it'll produce life in the rest of your body. I got more I need to say about it. Say this out loud. I give attention to God's words. I incline my ear to his sayings. I do not let them depart from my eyes. I keep them in the midst of my heart. God's words are life to me because I found them and health to all my flesh because they're in my heart. I keep my heart with all diligence for out of my heart are the issues of life. Praise God. Man, we got to go. Jumpstart Nation, listen. What what you've allowed into your heart, what has happened? Don't, I don't want to condemn that. That's condemning. What has happened to your heart in times past, what you've held in your heart, even if, even if it's not on purpose, has produced the outcomes of your life. Change the heart. Your life changes. How does the heart change? Through the Holy Spirit, through the Word, by revelation. Love you guys, man.
I'm in the head. I'm in a deer in the Holy Ghost headlights right now. I'm like, what just happened? Wow. Wow. Okay. Praise God. That is awesome. Love you guys. Healing starts in the heart. Prosperity in the heart. Peace in the heart. Joy in the heart. It's when revelation hits your heart like it did to Nancy a minute ago. And some of you, man, that's like medicine. That's like a heart pill. That's medicine to the heart. Love you guys. Love you guys.